Hey, what's up guys, Loesch here. Um, today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on a really useful audio production tool called a de-esser. Um, a de-esser essentially removes unwanted frequencies from a sound um, uh, via via compression. So typically a de-esser will be used in, in vocals uh, because it removes sibilance. Uh, sibilance is that kind of unwanted frequency whenever letters like S and Z are pronounced, that hissing sound, um, that's sibilance. And a de uh is most commonly, I would say most commonly used to remove that. But in my experience, I've used a de for for um, other sounds as well. I'll use it for percussion. I'll use it for anything that has sort of like this frequency that stands out uh, and needs to be brought down to a comfortable level. Um, so yeah, let me just give you guys a quick example of what it does. Uh, I have this little vocal group here, and I already have um, a de loaded up right here. So let's listen just to this first part with the de on, and you can actually see the frequency go by and see how it's affected by the de -esser. And then we'll listen to it one time with, with the de off. So, uh, you know, if you have headphones on, you, you'll hopefully be able to hear the difference. Um, maybe turn it up just a little bit just so you can really get a, the full effect. But um, here it is with the de on. So let's just keep an eye on down here. Oh, let me just solo that. Sorry. Here we go. Balling down the street. Caught a million whip. Okay. So you can see it definitely did something right there. Um, let's just listen to it real quick with the de off, and then I'll go into explaining what that did. So here it is with the de off. Balling down the street, caught a million whip. Okay, so hopefully you were able to notice um, when I said the word street right here, the letter S, um, that was where that, that spike was. That was that particular frequency, the sibilance in that sound uh, at that frequency that was reduced by the de -esser. Um, So this is a very... Uh, useful tool because if you don't remove these sort of sounds or these sort of frequencies from sounds uh, in the mix down, they will be very prominent in the master. And although in the master you can remove um, sibilance and other frequencies that stand out, uh, it's going to compromise the overall integrity of the rest of your sound. So I usually recommend to do it in the, in the mix down. Um, so yeah, let's, let's quickly go through and, uh, you know, discuss how to identify where the um, sibilance or unwanted frequency occurs, and then we'll build a de from scratch. So I'm actually in Ableton Live 9, and I have uh, a de preset right here. You may have the same, but I'm going to build it from scratch just so I can show you how it works. Um, so yeah, first things first, uh, I do recommend using an EQ to figure out you know, where uh, the sibilance or those unwanted frequencies occur. Um, I already know mine in my song, they occur just over 6K, so they're going to be right up over here. Right, um, and over time you will develop your ears, so you'll be able to just say like, "Oh, hey, you know, I know that this is probably where this this frequency is is popping out." Um, but in the meantime, if you if you don't have that kind of ear or you're still training, uh, I recommend using a good notch EQ just like this. You know, turn on headphone mode and just sweep through your sound as it plays, and 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 locate those uh, unwanted frequencies. Um, in my in, in this song, you can actually you'll be able to actually see a little bump right about 6K right, or just over 6K over here. I'll play it real quick and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Balling down the street. That little little tail right there. That's that's the sibilance. And again, it doesn't look like much, but um, down the road it can really cause problems, especially in the master. So uh, now that we know where the sibilance is occurring, let's build the de um, so it is just uh, the stock compressor within Ableton. We're going to toggle the more options here. Here is your standard sidechain. Uh, we're going to go over to EQ and let's switch our filter type to a notch EQ, just as we had over here uh, in our EQ. Um, this is from a different example, but um, yeah. So here we have the EQ notch frequency. This determines at what frequency we're going to be, um, you know, using this compressor. And we already know it's just over 6K, so I'll put it like right there. Uh, Q, this is how precise your notch is going to be. You know, are you going to be, um, you know, more broad like this or more precise? In general, I recommend um, being more precise than broad. Uh, especially if you are targeting one specific frequency, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna affect the whole sound in ways that you may not intend to. So keep this pretty high. Um, 
ratio is your, your, your standard compression ratio. If you've never used a compressor or never, you know, used a de-esser, I recommend turning this up all the way and turn everything else down and, and really get a sense of what the tool does and then kind of work back until you get to a comfortable level. So um, I'll show you that an example here in a minute. Uh, we'll also go ahead and turn off the makeup. The makeup basically distributes um, the decibels that are reduced by the de-esser throughout the rest of the, of the uh, frequencies in the sound, which uh, kind of gives it a boosted, almost distorted effect. I, I don't really use it for mixing. I could see it maybe being used as like a just like pure effect kind of thing, but um, I, I don't use that. Um, and then we're going to want to open up our activity view. This is where we're going to actually be able to see uh, chronologically, uh, you know, this frequency passing by and its relative uh, decibel level. So let's just listen to it one time without the DSR really doing anything. And you'll see kind of like that S spike um, when the letter S in, in the vocals is pronounced. So uh, again, here we go. Balling down the street. Yep. So see that? That's the letter S, and that's what we want to remove. So, um, so basically now using a combination of the threshold, which is basically at what decibel level will the um, de-esser come into effect, uh, the ratio, which is by what compression ratio we're working with, uh, the attack, how quickly the de-esser uh, kicks in, release, how, how long it takes to let go of the effect. Um, and yeah, let's just go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and listen to this kind of on a, on a repeat on a loop and uh, find the best spot. So uh, yeah, here we go. Balling down the street, 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 balling down the street. Okay, so that's pretty good for me. Um, you can see that it is, you know, reducing the level of that um, of that particular frequency. My ratio is somewhat high. Um, I, I, this was kind of a quick job here, but um, I, it's it's not like compromising the rest of the sound. It's just bringing the frequent uh, the level of that frequency down to a level that fits better with the rest of it. Um, so yeah, that's a de-esser. Uh, let me show you real quick um, how I use this on my master chain because I do also uh, use it when I master tracks. Um, which is here's my here's my master chain, just the, the final part of it, and um, you can see my ratio is set pretty low here. Um, let, let, let's just listen to the drop of this song, uh, the main the main groove, and uh, let, let's just watch and see what happens to. You know, again, we're just over 6K, so let's see what happens to that frequency. Here we go. Quarter million whiff. So you can see there's a lot going on, but um, because the ratio is kind of lower, um, it's not actually really doing uh, as much as it would be if it was higher. So again, I use this sort of as like a rounding tool um, to kind of smooth out the higher uh, frequencies of the final master, just so there aren't any unintended like harsh frequencies that you know hurt people's ears. But um, I would be very frugal with using this in the in the master chain. Um, so yeah, that's a de-esser. Hopefully the video was uh, clear and helpful for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And hopefully I will be back uh, with another video uh, in a couple weeks or so. So uh, yeah, thanks guys.